Welcome back to the program. Lou Seipelt along with Michelle Brown in studio with us and also in studio with us, uh, Sergeant Nate Ludwig from the Iowa State Patrol. As uh, we're here to talk about being safe this time of year, especially with what is happening tomorrow. The school buses mm -hmm. are going to be out in, in force starting full tomorrow, swing. Michelle. So, uh, Nate, there's a lot of things that people need to keep in mind, and their eyes have to be uh, on the road mm -hmm. uh, a little more than normal. Right. Because it, let's be totally honest, yep. not everybody's concentration is 100% on the road nowadays. Right. They're usually on their phone. But, yeah, school, <laughs> school <laughs> No, buses. and that's not a lie. Oh, that's, that's not a lie. Yeah. yeah. A lot of it. There is uh, school starts tomorrow. I know kids are happy, but parents are really happy mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, i'm not gonna lie so I school buses too. you're gonna see on the roadway so that's just a big um, change for people to see those buses on the road and then we have a lot of questions on what the school bus law is in iowa so. okay so yeah let's answer some of these questions because some people might think they right. know what the laws are but right. why don't you just enlighten us to, and remind us right and usually we like when people say well i thought i had to stop instead of i didn't think i had to stop <laughs> erring on the side of the caution is mm -hmm. a little bit better than anything so basically if you have two or more lanes and you're in an opposite direction travel of the school bus you do not have to stop two so, or more is it two or more two, on the on the once on your side on of the your line uh, it, but if it is just a, a two-lane street two two lane road it doesn't matter either direction you have to have two or more lanes and going the opposite way before you don't have to and I don't want to confuse people we'd rather have them err on the side of caution right um, because there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to see a school bus with flashing lights mm -hmm. going everywhere it's huge it's yellow Put your phone down, pay attention to where you're going, and be prepared to stop. Yeah, and, and we're going to say that more than once here. Put your phone down. Mm -hmm. you, you don't need to be on your phone, period. No. Now, now uh, before we, we talk about the uh, what's going to happen to people if they don't pay attention to this law, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what, as a reminder, what is the law when it comes to using your phone in the car? Right. The biggest thing, the, the myth that we have with people is that when they pull up to a stop sign or a stoplight, they think their car's off, they can just grab their phone. Because we're just so instinctive as society to hear that ding, grab our phone real quick, text, put it down. But you can't. You have to be off the travel portion of the road at a complete stop before you can write, send, or receive a text message. Really? Okay. So yep. the, the, the stoplights is yep. not your, your, uh, nope. your clue or key to, no. to grab your phone. And we see that all the time. Uh, over the course of the 11 days of the state fair, I had my patrol car in the hall of law at the state fair. So I had an unmarked pickup. And driving from the State Fair to the west side of Waukee on 235, I've never seen so many people driving down the road texting. So now, do you, are you guys, you pull people over for that if you see that? We, I mean, are you making would, more yes, of those types of But I didn't, I didn't have any lights and I had an unmarked vehicle, so it was just basically a transport vehicle that I had while I, my vehicle was parked in the hall a lot at the State Fair. So, okay. But I mean, you definitely see a lot more of it as a citizen when you're not working mm -hmm. because people are looking around for a police officer and grabbing their phone. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's talk about the, the school buses, back to the school buses here again. Right. What if you don't abide? If you don't abide. By, by the law you just said, say uh, you're, you're traveling and you pass a school bus. Right, right. Back in 2011, there was a seven-year-old um, girl that was hit and killed up in north central Iowa called Caden Halverson was her name. In 2012, the state legislature passed a law called Caden's Law, which enhanced the penalties uh, for offenders that violate the school bus law. So if you go around the bus and it's a clear violation, it's at least a $250 fine and a 30-day suspension of your driver's license. Oh, really? And as those subsequent offenses go up the fine goes up the suspension goes up and then of course if somebody's hit or killed then it's uh, okay. maximum mm -hmm. so yeah actually we're, i'm just looking at some of the uh, the second and third offenses yep. uh, that we have here um uh, the code says uh, you know at least 315 dollars uh, you know up to close to two grand mm -hmm. uh, imprisonment right also a possibility yep. and that's after the the second offense the second offense and you i mean to get one offense is bad, but if you're going to be a oh. second offender and you didn't learn your lesson yeah. the first time, it's real bad. Exactly. And we had um, 80 violations last year, just the state patrol did. So that's just one agency. So I don't know statewide how many times this happens, but I think anything more than one is too much. Yeah, I would agree. What, what is the penalty for texting and driving? $100 fine. First offense, uh, it's a non-moving violation, or it is a moving violation, um, but... Even if you're sitting still. Even if you're sitting still. <laughs> yep. Your engine's moving, yep. okay. And under the age of 18, you can't be on your phone at all, and that's something that we definitely see a lot of. Is really? Younger, I didn't realize that. Not at all. Not, you can't even talk on the phone. Can't talk on the phone. Under, I didn't know that. Under the age of 18, you can't engage in a, any a phone Throw call. it in the back seat. I have a 16-year-old. Yep. Yeah, yep. you need to throw it in is the back the seat. Is that the rule? Yes, just not even have mm -hmm. it in your range. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, and again... Because they'll lose their... They, if, 
with one offense for somebody under the age of 18. It'll be longer until they get their full unrestricted license. Yep. Okay. Yep. You know, how many offenses do you end up seeing in a, in a beginning of the school year? I, I think would be the, the right. time when people either aren't, are, aren't used to stopping or, or not driving around school buses. Is this when you get an influx of violations? Just because we haven't seen buses on the road for three months. And those county blacktops, those rural areas, when people kind of get in that zone of driving, when they just don't think of anything, and then all of a sudden there's that school bus, those are primarily the dangerous ones. Because when you're around in the city, it's, you know, it's stop after stop after stop. It's a little more slow go. But... Secondary uh, roads and gravel roads is where we see those accidents occur, and you're right, usually in the fall, right after school buses come on the road. And this this time of year, actually, you've mentioned is is a more dangerous yeah. time on the roads yep. because of all back to school yep. and uh, the sporting events. Yep. Is it at end of the end of the summer, last minute vacations people take, Labor Day holiday. Um, I think the Hawkeyes game is at uh, two thirty, and Iowa State plays a night game at seven o'clock on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So. You add those late night college games or afternoon, you're just asking for alcohol problems and OWI, um, Labor Day, kids going back to college, uh, school starting up. August is typically one of that months that we have a high number of fatalities on Iowa roads. And the school bus law applies at all times of day? All times of day, yep. Okay, yep. so day and night. Yep, and there's no reason, like I say, I can't say it enough, that those flashing amber and then those red lights, the gate arm comes out. It's everywhere. Okay, so no, another question. Down, okay, stop. here's another question. Now mm -hmm. you got my my wheels turning mm -hmm. here. Now you said if if you have two lanes mm -hmm. on the road that you are traveling and, right. and a bus stops. Yep. If you have two lanes, you can go around. As long as you're going the opposite yeah. direction. Opposite direction. Same direction. You're coming up behind that bus. It doesn't matter how many lanes there are. If you're stop. coming up behind a bus, you have to stop. You have to stop. Yep. Okay. 15 feet behind. All yep. right. So that, that was my question. Okay. Yep. So if you're coming up behind the bus, regardless, regardless. of what the, the, the laneage is, yep. uh, if that's such a word, but yep. uh, you have to stop. And people will panic because when those amber lights start to flash and you're going the opposite direction, some people speed up to beat that bus arm from coming out when the red lights flash. Because the bus drivers are trained to, within a certain amount of time from the stop, to turn on those lights within a certain speed zone. So as soon as you see those lights and you're going the opposite direction, you need to start to slow down because you have to be prepared to stop when the red lights come on. Okay, and then uh, if there are just two lanes on a road, yep. one each direction, Doesn't and, matter. and a bus is stopped, yep. and you're coming the opposite way, you have to stop. You have to stop. Okay, yep. now it, let's go multiple lanes again. You have multiple lanes and you're coming up on a bus that is stopped yep. and you have two lanes where you're, where you're driving, right. is it a violation if you do stop? I'm just saying, what if, if someone you, if wants you to be stop, on the safe no. side? And we'd, we'd almost, you don't want to say that, but it's kind of nice to have that because everybody's going to play follow the leader. If right. somebody's coming in the opposite direction and they see a car stop, everybody's going to slow down. But So that you're not doing anything wrong we're if not, you do We're that. not going to write a violation for That's that. That's what I was wondering. But Am I going to get a ticket for but that? But you could technically go you know, a little bit further and say stopping in the travel portion of the road because it might cause an accident. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if we want to talk about stopping in the opposite okay. lane when you're okay. not supposed to. But, because but you get just use, you, you keep this in mind, especially right. this time of year when you know right. this is when they come out in force. Right. And our biggest message is just put the phone down and just be prepared to stop and slow down and keep your eyes on the road where they should be. Are you guys pulling, do you, is there a large number of those stops that you are making for people that are on their phones? Uh, yes. In this last yep. It, it is a lot. We Somewhere between, I think it was about 187 tickets the State Patrol had written in one year when it was a secondary violation, and then almost 1,200 tickets when it was a primary violation really? just wow. last year. Well, yeah. you know, it's. I know the phone, of course, is a, is a distraction. You shouldn't be, but just even having the devices in your monitors right. and, and the, t you know, where you're, you, you can reply and right. do different things, that is really just as much of a distraction as having your actual phone there. Yeah, we've made cars so easy for us to travel and relying on movies in the cars, but really what it has done is just taken away the aspect of defensive driving that the motorist has to do because we're relying on sensors of uh, to going off instead of just ourselves <laughs> exactly. Yep. exactly all right well hopefully people will uh, you know take this uh, and and you know pay attention and mm -hmm. be able to use it to everyone's advantage and the reason we're doing this is for safety right yep keep the kids safe because the kids aren't going to look when they're going in between cars and buses so you have to rely on the adults and the bus driver um, just to be alert and be watching. Is there a place where people can go online to find out, you know, more about the? I can post something to our Facebook page things. today. There's okay. a DOT website that has it exactly with the drawings of uh, red to stop and green that you can still go. But like I said, the biggest thing is if you're coming up behind a, a school bus, no matter which direction, you have to stop, 
and going the opposite direction, just be prepared to slow down, especially when it's uh, less than two lanes. There you go. All Good right. Stuff. Well, well, Nate, put that up on uh, Facebook yep, later on today. Up. Let us know about it, and we'll put it on ours, too. Yep. We'll I'll link it up. There. You we'll bet. get it all going. It's Good to see you, buddy. You bet. Yes. Thanks Thank for you, having me. Thanks for coming in. in. Thank you. Sergeant Nate Ludwig, folks, uh, from the Iowa State Patrol, which is some things you need to keep in mind. Again, the school buses, uh, they wave the green flag on them tomorrow all over the state of Iowa, so keep that in mind. It is 10 minutes